Welcome back, everyone, to Football Dania. It is time for a match preview, Romania versus the Netherlands in the last 16 of Euro 2024. I'm joined by Mike and Abdul to talk about the game, and I'm hoping that we finish more positive vibes after losing to Austria. But by finishing third, fi finishing on the what is the more favourable mm -hmm. side of a draw, a tough match against Romania to come, looking at Austria again, or Turkey in the quarterfinals, and then potentially a meeting with England in the semi-finals before um, a final where, of course, the other side of a draw meets up. So how are we both feeling about this then, guys? Are we feeling more positive today? Well, I uh, I was very negative after the defeat. But uh, as I mentioned before the live stream, uh, things are just going in our favour so far. The first match, uh, Lewandowski did not play. The second match, Mbappe did not play. The third match, we lost, but the loss was actually good uh, to be in the other part of the of the of the draw for the round of 16. We avoided many opponents. We avoided uh, Germany, Spain, uh, it, uh, Germany, Spain, Portugal, France, um, and of course yesterday, uh, Switzerland defeated uh, Italy. Uh, we can avoid all the big names. I'm not saying that the coming names we will face are uh, less opponents, but uh, always big names cause you trouble. Always big names make you worry. So hopefully uh, this will continue and uh, we can also beat uh, Romania on Tuesday. Yeah, I feel like after the game against Austria, we're all pretty down. I'm uh, thinking that it's going to come up against England and I think England have the players to to really hurt this Netherlands side. So, yeah, I think the the fact that we've got Romania now, I don't think it's going to be an easy task, but I think that you can go into it with a bit more confidence that you're going to get through it. Um, and hopefully the loss to Austria has changed some things in the background. You know, the players are coming out and saying that they all had very harsh words to say to each other um, in the, the training. And hopefully that's galvanised them because... Sometimes a, a shock defeat can maybe boost you and make your performance get better. And let's we'll see how it goes against Romania. If we go out and beat them comfortably, then yeah, I'd be a lot more confident about our chances of actually reaching the final. So reflecting upon the Austria game, we were all really annoyed and disappointed with it all. Um, but do, do you look at things a little differently now that they've had this so-called harsh words and in my view, the Netherlands didn't need to win the game. So it does take the edge away from it. Austria may have felt like they needed to get at least a point from it. Hence why they needed to. Even though they rotated a couple of players, they were still going for it, if you like. And if Netherlands needed a point from that game, because they didn't draw against France, let's say, I'm sure they would have got it. And that's my feeling there. Um, but still, we're not, you know, we didn't win the group with nine points and and these kinds of things. So we're not standing out as one of the best nations in the tournament. But are we channeling a bit of Portugal, Euro 2016, finishing third in the group? Is there a bit of this maybe going on? Well, it, it also happened in 88. Uh, we lost the first match against Soviet Union by then. We won the second match against England and we barely made it in the, in the last match against Ireland. We barely won 1-0 in the last maybe 15 minutes or 10 minutes. We scored the winner. So um, the first round doesn't say much as long as you learn from it. And uh, what I really see from the outcome of the game, the press conference and all that, the players uh, are taking the, the responsibility. And I was happy when uh, uh, Van Dijk said, you know, we, we are the last people who should uh, celebrate or enjoy being in the other part of the round of 16 because of our bad performance. He said something like that. The players uh, had some harsh words uh, against each other. So I'm sure things will work. I cannot say I'm sure, but mm. I hope uh, things work out. This is an indicator that the players will give us a better performance uh, on Tuesday. Why are we in this boat in the first place, though? Why are we talking about harsh words needed after after a group stage? We got, went into a tournament knowing that we weren't going to be one of the favourites. The players would have known this, that they'd have to work extremely hard and, and be determined in every game. So why has this happened? Is it Kuman here who hasn't been able to manage the players properly? Yeah, I think that it's been doing the rounds um, in the past week. There's an interview that Noel Lang gave um, where he talked about the difference between Van Hal and, yeah, and Kuman. And Van Hal being very strict and then Kuman being a bit more like, ah, you can do whatever you want. 
And then I think that that's come down to the players as well, where there's not that attitude and that's been missing. I think that they, there's a bit of underestimation of, of Austria. Kuman made some changes that didn't work. And then some players had terrible games, like Van Dijk's come out and said that he was terrible in that game and he needs to learn from that. Ake said that's probably the worst game he's ever played in his life and he says he'll, <laughs> he won't be playing like that again. So you've got a couple of players who have come out and said that, yeah, they, they weren't at it against Austria and then look what happens. Um, but I think that the harsh words need to be probably drilled at players like in the midfield, like Reinders and, and Shelton, who are, who are really poor. And you actually saw that during the game because there's a couple of times where towards the end, you know, Memphis was going to get a throw in and he was looking for, for Shelton to come and quickly get the ball. Yeah, he got annoyed, didn't he? <laughs> It's just lazily like walking around the middle of the park, and then like Memphis is shouting at him, being like, "Come on, like let's go!" And like that's, I hope the attitude that they're installing in these players is that every second counts. You know, you've got to be at it for ninety minutes in these games, and you know, not showing that willingness to, to fight until the end is going to get you some harsh words. And I think that comes down from the management off the pitch. And it comes down from the players on the pitch. Who's the leader of this team? Is Van Dijk going to be the one that's now going to shout at everyone to make sure that they're doing the right things? But is Van Dijk going to be doing the right things? Because we all know that he was out of position for two of the goals. So, yeah, I think it's a, a collective of Koeman and the players needing to take responsibility going forward. OK, well, before we talk about Romania, I just want to give another big shout out and a thank you to everyone that's been listening to our podcast throughout the, the sort of Euros campaign, if you like, and the qualification campaign before that and people going on the website and using Twitter as well. But keep it going, um, keep helping us grow. We've had lots of new people come and check out our show. So give us a like and subscribe if you are new, of course, for Port Anya. We know that you might be listening on Apple or SoundCloud. Same thing, give us a like over there too. So Romania, and they finished top of a group where all four teams finished with four points. A quite a remarkable occurrence there. They um, beat Ukraine 3-0 with some wonder goals in that in that first game, uh, losing to Belgium. That's the only game I've seen of Romania so far. I know Mike said the same as well. Um, but I didn't I didn't think much of them against Belgium, um, but I did see their energetic highlights, if you like, against Ukraine and know that they obviously can be dangerous. Every team that's made it this far has got something about them. Um, but what are those main parts about Romania that make, make you worry as a Netherlands fan? Uh, it's a very hard-working team. Uh, they they play very well as a group. They kind of remind me of Austria. Maybe the quality of the player. Brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. They do remind me of Austria. They don't really have uh, one star. The team, uh, just they, they play together as a group. And that's what uh, helped them to qualify. Even the match they lost against Belgium, I think they, they played well in that match. They were fighting for an equalizer, but Belgium scored the second, like in the in the last 10 minutes maybe of the match. So the match was very competitive. And um, I don't expect it to be an easy match uh, for Orania. So we really have to be careful. We really have to play way better than we played against Austria if we want to win this match. Yeah, and I would echo that and say that it's, it sort of reminds me of the Czech Republic game uh, from the last Euros where hmm. everyone's went into it thinking like, oh, this is going to be, should be an easy win. We've got on the easier side of the draw. If we get through this, we can look at the semifinals and then one error and then you're looking at a defeat. And that's what, you've got a safeguard against that. You know, mistakes can be punished by any team that's in the last 16. And I think that, Everyone's need to be switched on from the first minute to to last. Not let Romania get any confidence because if they, this team gets any confidence, then it's it's dangerous. And they've got some players that can harm you, and especially from range that they showed against Ukraine. They've got um, a couple of players that, that stand out. You know, you've got Dennis Mann. Um, I've seen him play. You've got Hadji, who's a who's a Rangers, um, and I think their fullbacks, the fullbacks bomb forward, and they're they're dangerous as well. So. I think for the Netherlands, it's, it's crucial that they, they take the lead um, and don't let them get strangled on the game because you've got to look at shutting down their confidence earlier on, show that we're at it, show that the Netherlands have, have turned up and learned from the game against Austria, try and get that early goal, and then that should be should be good enough. I think defensively, we're strong enough to keep this Romania side out if they play at the level that they should be playing. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how Kimmins sets up to play this team. Um, 
because he definitely got it wrong against Austria. So hopefully he writes that that right hand side and yeah, just stop the midfielders like Marin and, and Mann getting on the ball and then you should be okay, I think. Mm. Good old Martin Marin, who of course was a seemed seen as a bit of a flop, I think, from his time at Ajax. Uh yeah, so there he's in the midfield, isn't he? But then past that, there aren't too many superstars. And this just again reminds me of the Austria team. People in the live stream comments and the comments on, on our post match after the game, they were just saying some comments saying that it actually wasn't to do with how the Netherlands would set up or how they played. They actually didn't play in their words that badly. It was how Austria played really well and how their setup was too much with the pressing. How do you both feel about those comments? Do you want to respond to any of that? And I know football is always subjective, it's an opinion, what have you. But do you agree or disagree with that? Because was I, not, were Austria just too good? Uh, well, I partially agree. Austria played well, but we also did not play well at all. Uh, anybody who sees uh, the, the first goal Austria scores, he will know that he will know right away that we were not. Yeah, it was an goal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The, the mistake that Malin did was very amateur. It shows you that the team wasn't really mentally ready for this match. And the, all the passing mistakes that happened uh, throughout the match, the, the, the defensive mistakes, uh, the, the mistakes that the defense uh, did in the match, shows you that the players did not really, uh, or they were not really focused in, in that match. So I think Austria played, played well and we did not play well. It, it can be both ways, you know. Yeah, I totally agree. I think that Austria did play really well and they're a good side and they've they're rightly getting praised for what they've done so far in the tournament. But if you've got all three goals that they scored, all three were avoidable defensively. And that's that's the killer for the Netherlands. You know, Van Dijk was out of position for the second one with the header. He was out of position for the third one, letting everyone on side. And I think for Bruggen, whether it was, it was a good finish from Sabitzer, but from that angle, you've, if Verbruggen was just standing up or even came out a bit further to meet Sabitzer, he wasn't going to score from there. Um, and then the first one, that was just a calamity of, of lack of communication between Richard and, and Malin. Um, so I think all three of their goals were avoidable. Um, and Netherlands just didn't take their chances as well. You got to look at the Malin one where he's one on one on goal. You can't finish that. Um, you got Veghorst at the end, the header. You put it over when we all say, you know, we, Van Adam's not having a great tournament, but Van Adam was probably in a better position to finish that off as well. So yeah, I think that on another day that game doesn't end the way it does. But you got to say fair play to Austria; they've, they've done well. But it's it's also down to a lot of mistakes from from the Netherlands, especially in midfield and defence. And I think the way the Netherlands can play, I think I'm disappointed that Kuman didn't play a similar way to Fra how France did it. They did shut down Austria really well, and it was a boring match. But they won the game one 0 and I know that's how the Netherlands can play as well. They have the ability to play in that style, which is frustrating to see. But we all know our defence is better than the attack. And perhaps if the Netherlands are fortunate enough to get through to the quarterfinals and meet Austria again, that may be how they have to play. But in terms of this one, do you go 4-3-3? Do you play five at the back? Romania are a team that will play, like you said, similar to Austria. But is that then a response to change the formation um, and the personnel? Or is it... Uh, another chance to play a 4-3-3, knowing that they should have more of the ball against teams such as Romania, who will say it, you know, the Netherlands are better than them on paper, but this tournament, it's been a tournament of, if you set up well, you can close that gap to the bigger teams and, um, you know, you can get results. And that's how Romania, I'm sure, will try and play. But what do the Netherlands do in response? Well, we, we played the 4-3-3 against France and we closed all the gaps. They barely had any chances they only had two, two real chances the entire match. And you're talking about France, a team that has a, probably one of the best uh, uh, attackers in the world. Uh, but against, uh, against Austria, uh, the defense was widely open. And I think part of the reason was the right side. Gil Trauda and Malin, it did not work. Uh, Gil Trauda left so many uh, empty spaces in the back. And uh, the first goal actually... Uh, he was partially responsible for it. 
uh, and of course Malin scored that uh, goal for uh, for uh, Austria. Uh, if we play the same way we play again, we played against France. Dumfries as a starter, maybe uh, Frimpong uh, up front. Um, I think we can close all the gaps. The left side was fine. It was only the right side that was bleeding the entire match, actually. Yeah, I think it'll be a 4-3-3 three, three again. Um, interestingly, Van Dijk, I think I talked about in a post stream that he's never liked the 5-3-2, and he's again come out and said in the press conference that he really doesn't want to, to go back to it. So I think why that, is he saying things like that though in 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 a tournament like that? Because that then suggests we wouldn't do that because of player power. And if we did do that, that suggests that Kuman's got no ownership of the, over the players. Sorry to interrupt you, Mark, but I just think that's a really odd comment to make in the middle of a tournament. Yeah, and I think that that shows the the player power that's here. And I think we know that from we discussed Kuman's comments after the defeat, where he was basically saying that he doesn't know if he'll make changes and he has to actually speak to the players first. It, it, yeah, I think there is a certain amount of power some of the players have and even memphis today has done a press conference where he's saying there's a new hierarchy in the in the squad um and i think kimmon does listen to them i think he does genuinely allow certain players to have sort of free reign in training and free reign on the games and there's a couple of people that would never get dropped and i think that van dyke is one of those who has has a say and um, that's that's listened to and whether it's right or wrong um because he's the one that was you know, partially at fault for two of the goals. So if he's going to play like that, then we do need to go 5-3-2. Um, but I do think it'll be 4-3-3 against Romania. I think we'll see Dumfries come back in. Um, I think we'll see someone else start on right wing. I think we'll see Simmons possibly start. Um, I think Kuman got it wrong from the start against Austria, but I think you're right those wrongs. And you'll see Dumfries um, playing right back, especially. Um, interesting, I've seen a lot of clamour and, and you know, Dutch pages saying that Daily Blind could probably come into the side and play defensive midfield, but I, I don't see that. I think you're, you're more likely to see Shouten and, and Reinders and Simmons, I think, from the start for this one. I want to talk about the starting 11, then how we're going to piece all of this together. A few players had poor performances against Austria. Ake was one of them, but surely someone like him keeps his place. Uh, Verbruggen's still in goal. Van Dijk is still in defence. Does De Vrij still keep his place? Can I just get a nod or a shake of the head from both of you? What do you think? Uh, I think Kuman will keep uh, De Vrij. Exactly, yeah. He's probably yeah, going to stay there. But you're probably yeah, tempted to change that now. I don't think he will bl blame him for the previous match because the entire team was bad. It wasn't only De Vrij. I I'll be surprised if he put uh, De Ligt, for example, you know, instead of yeah. De Vrij. But I, will, I think he will keep Van Dijk and uh, De Vrij as a right back. He will. I think he will bring uh, Dumfries back. Dumfries is coming back, back isn't it's he? going to be Nathan Ake. The midfield is exactly how you said it. Uh, Reinders, Schouten and uh, Savi, uh, Simmons. As well, a hang on a second. So Mike said about putting Simmons maybe on the right side. And oh, I'm, no, I meant, him in the number 10. I meant middle. So I meant Simmons will come in for the middle. Right. So I think It'll that's a wise right decision. Winger. Yeah, yeah the new he, right winger, that, that would be interesting to see. I mean, he, we're expecting Memphis himself. to start, so who plays with him? Hapo and... Um, uh, then uh, the, the question was, uh, is it going to be... Uh, well, I don't know if it's going to be Frimpong or uh, Malin again. I don't think he's going to try a new player in that position in this match, you know. So it's either going to be um, Frimpong or Malin. Uh, I know some people are against Malin. They're so angry with him, the way he played uh, the previous match. He wasted a chance. He's, he had an own goal. But I thought he was trying very hard for the rest of the match, you know. He was trying very hard to correct his mistakes, but just things did not work out. So maybe Kuman will give him another chance uh, this match. Or Frimpong. This is the only uh, change I can see coming in, in, the, in, the, in the next match. So again, no big sweeping changes then we, we, that we expect. Nothing really in the media suggesting that that will change either. But if this were up to you two, because I think people were doing this in the comments, they'd love to be sharing their lineups and, and who they'd change. Maybe some sweeping ones, Zerxe, Brovi, you know, you name it. Um, what would be like your big changes in this game? If Because we're all like to be the manager, don't we? So <laughs> let, let's, let's have a little go ourselves. <sighs> For me, it's not popular, but I think this Netherlands side is still at its best when it 
keeps it so tight defensively and hits on the counter. So I think 5-3-2, I know it's not popular, <laughs> but I think 5-3-2 with Dumfries and Matson as the wing backs is the way that Netherlands sides should be set up. The midfield's not strong enough in the attack. Gakpo's been the best player in attack, but he's not getting the ball enough. So I think that if you played 5-3-2, had Matson on the left, um, either Frempong or Dumfries on the right, probably Dumfries, and then went. The middle is the same as what was said. Then up front have Gakpo and Memphis. I think that would solve a lot of issues because you'd have Matson and, and Dumfries getting forward. And we'll see what Matson can do in the Champions League this season getting forward. So as long as you keep it tight, this is last 16 matches. You don't want to play beautiful football. We all want to see it, but the main thing is that you win. You don't concede goals. So I think that keeping it really tight at the back, hitting them on the counter through, through pace of Gakpo, Memphis, Matson, and Dumfries would be the way forward. But yeah, I don't think that's very popular in the Netherlands. I don't think they're going to do that, but that's what I would do. I would go for 5 3 2. And of course, it's just me. I would love to see some new attackers up front. Maybe Gakpo and Broby or Gakpo and Xerxes. Memphis will play behind them to uh, as a playmaker. But in that case, uh, Simmons will not be a starter. Uh, that's my, my opinion. Or maybe Simmons can be a starter with Gakpo and Memphis behind them. I see Memphis as a playmaker much better than a scorer, you know. And of course, for the right and left backs, yeah, I would definitely go for uh, Dumfries or, uh, and uh, Van Diven or uh, uh, Nathan Ake or even Madsen, yeah. Do you know, I think the problem we have is that lack of a left wing back. We want Martin to play, but I don't think Kuman sees a strength in him and can't can't get the best out of him, maybe. But if we'd had someone such as Hartman fit, would we have played the five more often and had Dumfries as right wing back or Frimpong? I think there's bits that I'd like to see, but I don't know how you quite piece more together. Like I'd love to see Memphis out on the left wing, um, Hapo playing somewhere, Brobby playing somewhere. Um, yeah, having someone like Martin as a wing back, Frimpong and, and Dumfries getting the best out of those, but it's just how do you do it? And I think that's what Kuman has found really hard. Um, after that, yeah, just what we've been seeing. The defence is great. Having Ake back as a left centre-back would be good. Um, and in midfield, if had we had Frank De Jong, I think it just would have pieced it all together quite nicely. But it's hard trying to get all of that on the same pitch. I, I don't like what um, uh, Va uh, Van Dijk said, by the way, when he said that, you know, he doesn't like to play 5-3-2. I think as a captain of the team, I would say uh, I prefer 4-3-3, four, four, uh, four, three, three, but I'm willing to play 5-3-2 if that yeah. helps the team, if the coach sees this as the right selection, yeah. as the right formation. But he did not say that, unfortunately. Yeah, that really got on my, got on my nose. And Mike said that that had happened. I just... I don't know why you would do that now. Um, and even even so, you're a centre back. <laughs> Wouldn't you rather have another centre back next to you? I just he's giving his opinion on how the team attack when he's a centre back. Yes. Mm. Yes. Finally, then, guys, prediction time. Um, are any of us going to be unpopular and predict a Netherlands exit? Let's find out. Who wants to go first? I would say two one for Orania. Goal scorers. Memphis. Memphis and Gakpo. Okay. I'll go an edgy 1 0 for Netherlands. Gakpo mm -hmm. doing the business. I think that Liverpool fans are probably loving this tournament because they've seen the real Cody Gakpo. And it, I think Arna Slot has an easy win um, ahead of him next season just by playing Gakpo on the left. And then what you can see from him is he always turns up for the Netherlands in, in major tournaments. I think he'll be the one that leads them to the, the quarterfinals. I'm going to go, oh, I'm stuck between a real rough, edgy, narrow win and then like a penalty shoot shootout to sort of see, see us through maybe. Uh, I'll, I'll be positive. I, I do have a gut feeling that Netherlands will, will do it and it just won't be very easy at all. Um, but I just know that we have the firepower to score goals and it felt, it felt like the opposite which would be true coming into this. We'd be able to see to have clean sheets more often. Um, that that does things isn't, isn't there anymore. I, I actually think with the four three three, we can if we need a goal with half an hour to go. I almost feeling confident we'll score the goal, but now I just feel like we'll concede another one. <laughs> Should we get it? Which doesn't feel right. Which doesn't suit the players we have. But yes, I think that will happen. Um, 
maybe the Netherlands will get will get that goal if it's a tight game and it's nil nil and it's one nil. Do we then see it out or will Romania come fighting back and then it's one one and then it's a difficult game again? Extra time. Uh, I will go one nil Netherlands. We can kill. Uh, sorry, uh, I think we can destroy any opponent with uh, with our counter attacks. Uh, if we play that way. Idea. Yeah, if we play that way, I think a team like Romania or Austria can struggle a lot if they decide to attack. I think what we need to see from this game as well is we saw it against France that, that came in, got his substitutions right in the game management. But against Austria, as soon as we got that second goal, what was going on in the France game? He, he should have shut it down. He should have brought on an extra defender, gone maybe gone 5 3 2 at the end, just saw out the game. But he went gun ho at the end. Um, hmm. So I think better game management from coming as well. If we get a lead, I know everyone hates England for it, but if we start to get a lead, let's be a bit smarter. Let's not try and commit too many people forward and leave gaps in defence. Let's if it's one 0 going into the last half an hour, bring on Delict. You know, go five at the back, just see out the win. And then you you're in the you're in the quarterfinals. So I think that Cummins needs to be smarter with substitutions, make it more defensive towards the end if we're winning. Then just shut the game down. And that's when you've actually got place for someone like Daily Blint or Vinealdum or both to come into midfield like later on in the game, if that is really how it is going. But of course, if it then if they get an equalised and it's extra time, you've got relying Blint and Vinealdum in midfield for another half an hour. But that would be tempting for me, like Mike was saying, delict, bring those and bring bring Brobby on to hold the ball and just win fouls. Yeah, why why can't we do that? Why can't we do something that is seen as negative, but will help us get the result? rather than what you said, because we had, we had on to the draw um, five points. It's more of a positive picture, but then we know where we might have ended up on the side of a draw, which is just ridiculous. Yeah, I think Blint can help more with that as a defensive midfielder. If we decide to Not for the whole game, though. No, definitely not for the whole game. But if we decide to defend in some part of the game, I think bringing Blint as a defensive midfielder is very helpful. And now cue the comments, people saying, why would you think of bringing in Daily Blint? We've had a few of those already and we suggested just bringing him in for a little bit of this, a little bit of that. Well, his strengths, not to rely on him for a whole game at left back, for example, which we know he can't do anymore. But anyway, uh, let's know in the comments what you're thinking of the game then. Reflections on Austria, starting 11s, score predictions. You give us those comments again. We've had like way over like 50 or something in each preview we've done so far. And um of course, the live streams as well. We've had hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of comments after the game. So please do come and see us after the Romania game, no matter what the result is. Um, keep supporting football, Anya. Wherever you're reading or catching up on the news or listening to us, it's it's great to have you on the ride for the Euro 2024 tournament. Um, more from us soon. We'll see you after the game against Romania. And fingers crossed that we're smiling. <laughs> Bye, everyone.